சேகரிது So, how is the meditation? You'll have to turn on your video to answer. I cannot see anybody. Good. And the new link, they don't have to be on mute. The new we are still not on it. Okay. okay, did you do your homework, everybody? You'll have to unmute yourself to answer me. I cannot hear you. We watched the video, but we didn't read the yoga vasishta. So the video is still outstanding. Uh, okay, so Cosmos, take it. Yes. Okay, but you've read the pages? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Others? Yes, we are not confused. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was there to look at the other Sakul, let Sakul speak first. Sakul? Okay, you did both. Good. Take after you complete speaking, uh, mute yourself. Okay, Manoj, can you mute yourself so that I can hear Sakul? I didn't hear Sakul at all. Uh, yes, Sakul. this Mitesh, I cannot hear you. Okay, you might need to leave the call and then come back. I cannot hear you. Okay. Manoj, up to speed. But you reached page 31? No. Did you get to page 31? You are echoing, I cannot hear you. Yes, this is 33. Okay, very good. 33, no? Fantastic. <laughs> good job, Jashree. And Venkat, are you up to speed? Good. Yes. And Sushma also. Yes. And Sushma also is up to speed. Yes. Very good. Yes. yes. Very very good. And I hope the people who are on Google Air on YouTube live and watching us, I hope you are all up to speed. We will start with page 32, but before we go there, any questions so far? I answered most of your questions last week itself, right? So all clear, no? Okay, let's
let's go on to page 32. Who will start reading? Volunteer, volunteer, I'm going to pick you otherwise. Sandesh? Yeah, I can read. <laughs> Page 32. Yes. Page 32. Vashishtha continued. I shall now declare to you the creation and its secret. For it is only as long as one invests the perceived object with reality that bondage exists that bondage lasts. Once that notion goes, with it goes bondage. Here in this creation, only that which is created grows. It is and then goes either to heaven or to hell and it gets liberated. Okay, stop. Stop. Now you can mute yourself. Yeah? The paragraph is simple. You can see this, right? Everybody, show me a thumb like this. You can read it also. No? You bring it closer. It's very much out of focus. Now? Now, is it the same or is it better? Show me a thumb. It's, it's almost like it's almost like out of focus. How do I change that? Go to settings and. Yeah, that's what. In settings, I see FaceTime HD camera built in. Not the settings, but you know, like uh, the top, there are like five items. Yeah. So click on that, you know, you know, like the better adjust bandwidth usage. Which uh one? -huh. And then what do I do? Click on it and just go, mm -hmm. to the, go to the max, you know, like. Uh, it is max. It is max. Or is only Sandesh, can you mute yourself so I can hear Manoj better and Shruti also? Huh. Manoj, tell me what were you saying? I've already that's already in full. Auto HD is full. Yeah, I mean that that's Really? Okay. <laughs> so, the first line is, till the time you think sense objects are reality, till that time there is bondage. Yes? The moment this notion drops, the moment you understand that sense object is not equal to reality, that is freedom. Got it? This is what is the first paragraph. Till the time you are lost in this world. Yeah? Till that time, it is only going to be a bondage for you. That is all he is saying in the first line. Now, here also see he says, perceived object. Understand what is perceived object. Yeah? 
everything that I see, I hear, I taste, I touch and I smell. All these are objects of perception. Okay? Some people think perception is just through the eyes. That's not right. Yes? Perception is through all the five senses. And the object of all the five senses is the perceived object. Till the time you are caught in these perceived objects, it is bondage. Clear? We'll go ahead. First paragraph clear? Okay. Now who will read? Just pick someone. Venkat. Now you can mute yourself. Yeah. First understand the first word. Cosmic dissolution. What is cosmic dissolution? You watched cosmos now. Tell me when does cosmic dissolution happen? Yes, Pralaya. Give me an example from the video that you saw. What is Pralaya? What is cosmic dissolution? You saw it in the video, come on. No, no, no. Dissolution is the end. Big Bang is the beginning, Venkat. Uh, so, let me tell you what is that dissolution. You remember, in the video there is an asteroid which is coming very fast towards the earth and the asteroid just braces the earth the earth like it, it just it doesn't like hit completely but it just kind of wounds the the earth and passes away yes even when that asteroid just slightly touched the earth and went away what happened all the dinosaurs became extinct yes you remember that part yeah What are you saying, Venkat? I cannot hear you loudly. Are you saying I something? I think it landed in the Mexico or something. <laughs> it hit. It doesn't matter. Try and understand what is dissolution. Yeah? Dissolution is when everything comes to an end. Yes? Do you remember? There was one more instance, right now I can't remember because I didn't see the video recently, but there is one more instance where he talks about this solution happening. Does anybody remember? A volcanic eruption. Yeah, there was some volcanic eruption and... and that set fire to all the... The trees, right? Or the mm, trees all burnt. Which but that was not in Cosmos 1, so they might not know. So there is further, if you see the series, he talks about many times where 
life on earth completely ended. Yes. If you go further, he will tell you where there was a volcanic eruption. And because of that, no, no, I was not doing binge watching Mitesh. <laughs> there was this volcanic eruption because of which all the trees were burnt. There was a huge fire all over the earth. Yeah? And that ended life. Yeah? So there have been many, many episodes which the scientists could, you know, fathom and find out, yes, this was the time when completely life was wiped out. This is dissolution. Do you understand now? Yes? When completely everything ends. So now, go back to your book. I want you to, from the beginning, it has a Roman 7 at the bottom, I think. Roman 6. The page of contents. Yeah? Which has all the contents. Open that page. You see the first... Second, yeah. third. Third is section dealing with creation. Utpati prakaranam. Yeah. Next one is sthiti prakaranam. Sthiti is existence. And the next one, the last one is upashama. Upashama is dissolution. Yeah. So Yoga Vashishta takes you through creation, the existence and the end, this solution. Here it is just mentioned in one few sentence, like two sentences, but he will elaborate this in a section later on. Okay? So now what is he saying? What happens when there is this dissolution? The creation comes to an end. Everything just disappears. And where does it disappear into? Whatever you want to call it. Brahman, Atma or what? Truth. These are many names given to it. Okay? Then what happens? Then he says the same infinite self. The same after cosmic dissolution. This creation that dissolves in the Brahman. The same Brahman. Yeah? which only that Brahman is existing, suddenly in that there is a notion of I. This is the first notion, I. Yes? I equals I equals ego. Yes? The moment there is I, there is you or the other. Yeah? See this, there cannot be an I without you. And they cannot be a you without I. Yeah? So the moment there is I and you, there is duality. This is called Dvaita. This is how creation began. Because of duality, we got stuck in the cycle of birth and death. And that is why there is no liberation. Till the time we are stuck in duality, we are stuck in the cycle of birth and death. And till the time we are stuck in the cycle of birth and death, there is no liberation. Clear so far? Yeah? This is called the birth of mind. Yeah? This is where the mind was born. Yeah? And where can the mind end? Where can the mind end? Huh? The mind can end when this duality ends. Yeah? Till the time there is Dvaita in life, there is going to be mind. Yeah? This Sunday when we were doing the Ashtavakra, somehow in, while talking we came up with what is mind and what is the meaning of no mind? So, I drew a small a graph to show them. You can see this, right? Yeah. All the time you are continuously active. Thinking, 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 thinking. This is the way we are throughout the day. The mind is like this all throughout the day. Yes? Once in the day, you might come upon a time where you meditate or you do Kriya where 
you just relax you're like calm yeah so you move from mind to no mind yeah this might happen at least for a fraction of a second in your short kriya even if it is it is not happening the entire duration but at least minimum fraction of a second you come down and then you probably go back again this is called no mind this gap is called no mind yeah why af- after kriya or towards the end of kriya you feel very calm very relaxed right have you ever thought what happens in kriya what happens all the senses are active too much of reading think now in kriya <laughs> one by one too many people huh what increases beautiful so everybody please mute yourself now i told you this of a regular day with one short kriya yeah you get this one episode of no mind yeah what happens in long kriya in long kriya i have short small cycles medium cycles fast cycles in fast cycles my thought pattern is broken because of the breath so in fast cycles i go down yeah again my mind is very cunning huh? it has got used to long kriya also so again it comes back to thinking again when it is short cycles medium cycles again in fast i go down and this keeps repeating keeps repeating keeps repeating in a matter of one and a half hour this has repeated 10 20 times Do you see what I'm saying? Compare this to a regular day. That is why you feel like coming to the kriya again and again. Why? Because this is happening so many times. Got it? The no mind, the episodes of no mind, you experience much more again and again in. long clear to lift it's okay no got it yeah so the same infinite self conceives within itself the duality of one self and the other so recognize that the cause of dukha the cause of sorrow is only duality manoj is saying your network is low what can i do about it how do i change it let's continue with what is ha huh? so everybody just stay on mute so you can hear better you can hear me right everybody keep your videos on so that i can see you even if you're doing this i cannot really see you if your videos are off is your video on sandesh shruti yeah if you could just keep it on yeah okay and then he describes the same thing that the bracelet and the gold there is no difference so you and the brahman is the same there is no difference between you and the brahman clear this paragraph is clear
is seen to reduce your HD quality. Now can you hear me better? Like disable HD, do you want me to disable HD? Now you can? Okay. Yeah. Take it. Okay, fine. So you got this till here that there is no difference between the gold and the bracelet. Just like that. There is no difference between you that is the Purusha and the Brahman. Yeah. This is very important to understand. You are Purusha. Yes. You broke out from the Brahman at the beginning of creation when there was this I and you. Yeah? You when you broke out, what were you? Purusha or Prakriti? Or both? What were you? Before we broke out. Before you broke out, how can you be Prakriti? Broke out of where? Of Prakriti. Brahman. Brahman is the consciousness. Okay, understand what is Brahman. Brahman is like nothingness. This space, this air. Can you touch it? Can you see it? Can you feel it? It's just there. The space is there. Like that. Brahman is nothingness. Yes. You, I, Rupa, Venkat, Shruti, Sushma. Everybody here. We were all part of this nothingness. That is called Brahman. That is the pool of consciousness. Yes. In that pool of consciousness. On account of Maya. There was this ego I. Yes. You said I, she said I, he said I, somebody said I, I said I. This I, 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 what it did, it made you break out of that nothingness. Got it? And the one who breaks out, when you break out, you are an energy, you are not Prakriti yet. What is Prakriti? Matter. Earth, water, fire, ether and air is Prakriti. Understand this. Yes. And Purusha principle is the energy that is running this Prakriti. So first in the beginning of creation from this pool of consciousness the Purusha breaks out from the Brahman. Got it? Yeah. So Purusha broke out. Okay. Yeah. So exactly that is what is explained here. This Purusha broke out because of I, ego. Okay? Yes, Manoj will come there. Yeah. First let them get Purusha clearly, then we will come to Prakriti. Okay? So here it is explained that Purusha, though it broke out, it is not separate from the Brahman. Just like the bracelet is not separate from gold. Got it? Yeah? Yeah, the soul self. Cool? Yeah. Clear so far? Can we go ahead? Okay. Amruta, will you read? Third paragraph. Such a notion of existence is it arbitrated 
on the contrary such denial itself becomes a further distraction okay yeah here it is the repetition of the same thing yeah amrita you can mute yourself that just like there is a mirage everybody knows mirage no when you are walking in a desert yeah in the heat and in your fatigue you see an illusion of water in the distance it is just the sand shining because of the sun yeah but it is not really there you start thinking and believing there is real water there you imagine an entire oasis yeah that is a mirage it is not real so he say just like that mirage is unreal this creation is also unreal he say you have imagined it it is an illusion it does not exist yeah and till the time you cling to this notion of reality of you and i there is no liberation Yes, till the time you are stuck in you and I, there is going to be no liberation. He says, he emphasizes this point again and again. Yeah, the last line is even more important. Not by merely and verbally denying such a notion of existence is it obliterated. Means just by saying, okay, ठीक है. Now Ekta says it, Guruji says it. So now I believe that there. everything is illusionary yeah what am i doing what am i doing you are denying no even if i am saying it is there i'm not even denying it i'm you're saying you are just listening to other what others said but you are not experiencing yourself ha huh. yes It is just prabhava jnana. It is not swabhava jnana. Do you remember Ashtavakra? Yes, Ashtavakra fourteen. He explains to you the difference between swabhava jnana and prabhava jnana. Prabhava jnana is only borrowed knowledge. He told me, and she told me. He is a big master. He is enlightened. He said this, so I believe it. Yeah, but from within, it's not established. Yeah, then I'm just faking it. Yeah, like Venkat said, we are just faking it. And Manoj says we just have a concept in the head. Yeah, these concepts are of no use. Do you understand? He says not by merely and verbally denying such a notion of existence is it obliterated. I'm denying that it's not real, but. from within i don't really believe no what i'm even saying do you get it so it is not established in me he says you get established understand this from within yourself yeah on the contrary such denial itself becomes a further distraction this will only distract you if you do not get established in this knowledge Yeah. Yeah. So now we'll go ahead to the to the theorem of creation. Okay. I have come up with this thing. It is about the next paragraph. So next paragraph, when we read, be very. Huh. We can't see it clearly. next person to read shruti will you read shruti are you there
Yes, now I can hear you. Loudly. Rama, if the creation is in fact real, then there is no possibility of its cessation. For it is an immutable law that the unreal has no real existence and the real does not cease to be. Austerity, meditation and other such practices can therefore not cause its cessation, not enlightenment. As long as the notion of creation lasts, even the contemplation samadhi in which there is no movement of thought is not possible. Even if it were possible, the moment one returns from such contemplation, the creation will with its sorrow arises in the mind. Movement of thought creates the notion of created objects. Okay. Now you can mute yourself. Yeah. Understand it line by line. Yeah. He's saying, now he's proving it to Rama. Huh? If the creation is in fact real, then there is no possibility of its cessation. Yes? So let's look at this. Assumptions. You've done theorems in school, college, right? Yeah? So assumptions, not real, equals to no existence. Is this line clear? He says, if the creation is in fact real, then there is no possibility of its cessation. For it is an immutable law that the unreal has no existence. Unreal equal to no existence. Is this clear? Yeah, this is our assumption. Therefore, real equals to no cessation. He says, that which is real, there is no possibility of its cessation. Correct? So you got the two assumptions. They are laws basically. They are not assumptions. Two laws with which we start this theorem. Yeah. If creation equals to real. Yeah. Even if you say that creation is real. And real equals to no cessation. Correct. This is our law from here. From here we have brought this down. Real equals to no cessation. Therefore, creation equals to no cessation. Yes? If A equals to B, B equals to C, A equals to C, you've done this in school. Clear? Yeah? So, creation equals to no cessation according to yeah, your thinking, the way you are thinking right now. But, what happens at enlightenment? What has happened to Guruji? There is cessation of this creation. Yes? That's exactly what he says in the next line. Austerity, meditation and such other practices can therefore not cause its cessation nor can enlightenment. Yeah? If you believe that it is not real. Yeah? So, but we've seen that at enlightenment, at enlightenment, there is cessation of creation. Therefore, creation equals to cessation. Yeah. So this cancels out what we had made assumption here. This is wrong now. Yeah. And we said that which is real has no cessation. This we got from here, from our uh, law up there. Yeah. And real equals to no cessation. Yeah. Opposite of real is unreal. Opposite of no cessation is cessation. We've just turned this around. Therefore, unreal is equal to cessation. Right? Yeah. So simple. Thus, creation equals to cessation is equal to unreal. Hence proved. The creation is unreal. You guys are just dreaming. Proved? Yeah. We need to read the next line. As long as the notion of creation lasts, even the contemplation, samadhi, in which there is no movement of thought, nirvikalpa, 
is not possible. Yeah? Till the time you think that this creation is real, you will not experience nirvikalpa samadhi. It's just not possible. So the key is get it in your head that this is all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is all unreal. Yeah. You reach this conclusion. If you are an intellectual person, you are stuck in a theorem. You need a theorem to prove it. Yeah? If you are a bhakt or a devotee, just that experience of consciousness, no mind will get you to that place. Yeah? yeah? If you are totally a karma yogi, you have to really work hard to understand how creation is unreal because... Your face pr first premise is that the creation is real and you are working so hard in this creation. Yeah? Mitesh says, Sab moha maya hai. Correct? <laughs> yeah? Just wake up. This creation is unreal. I am just dreaming. Yeah? <laughs> ये इंटेलेक्चुअल माइंड के लिए है जो बहुत ज्यादा नहीं प्रूफ करके दिखा हुआ ऐसे बहुत लोग नहीं जब तक प्रूफ नहीं करोगे मैं नहीं मानने वाला लो जी प्रूफ स्कूल में सीखा था ना थियोरम लो प्रूफ ये इंटेलेक्चुअल माइंड को शट अप करने के लिए डिवोटी तो ऐसे ही पढ़ के ही शट अप हो गया या कर्म योगी मोह माया में फंस फंस के शट अप हो जाएगा फाइनली एवरीबडी विल कम टू द सेम प्लेस <laughs> Manoj says, is the enlightenment in the theorem based on scriptures? The enlightenment is the truth. That is what you see in Gurudev and in so many people. Yeah, You see, once they reach that stage, this creation just falls. Yeah? They are no more doing what we are doing. We are running after this, running after that, want this, want that, don't want this, don't want that. They have none of that. Yeah, They have risen very high beyond all this, beyond mind. Yeah? Where in that diagram I showed you the graph. No, We are always in that above level where the mind is on and on. They are always at the lower level of no mind. Yeah? That is enlightenment. And that possibility itself proves it that this creation is unreal. Yes, dissolving the Purusha and Prakriti back into Brahman is enlightenment, Rupa. Yeah? It happens also in stages. First an understanding comes, yeah? then the I dissolves. I was the root cause, no? That root cause has to dissolve first. When the I dissolves, then slowly, slowly your Prakriti dissolves and then the Purusha unites with the Brahman. This will be explained further. That is why right now your foundation has to be very strong. Yeah? A person whose foundation is not strong, who does not understand this, that the creation is unreal, he cannot experience nirvikalpa samadhi. What is nirvikalpa? Chalo, we've done Patanjali. Bolo, bolo. What is vikalpa, Anoj? Yeah, conditioning, yeah, or logic, or anything the mind says, this or that. This way or that way. I want this, I don't want this. Yeah? All this is conditioning. Yeah? Or vikalpa. Okay? Near vikalpa, devoid of any of these. Yeah? Is near vikalpa samadhi. Devoid of thought itself. Yeah? Logical thought, emotional thought, analytical thought. Don't come up with all those things. Everything devoid of every kind of thought is nirvikalpa samadhi. Yeah? This last sentence 
Can you see this? Establishing in the unreality of creation leads to nirvikalpa samadhi. Vashishta calls it no movement of thought. Yes? The moment there is movement of thought, there is mind. And when there is mind, there is vikalpa. Yes? Only in nirvikalpa is there no movement of thought. Clear? And that only happens when you are established in the unreality of creation. That the creation is unreal, basically. When you understand this. Manoj is asking, can creation be used as a means to discover Purusha? Yes, Manoj. Basically, that is what is the spiritual journey, na? Where we understand this creation. This creation is nothing but Prakriti. That is why I told you to watch Cosmos. I told you to see how these, this combination of earth, water, fire, ether, air has come into being. How everything just came up from nothingness. Yeah? That you saw the cosmic calendar, right? On 1st of January, in the first second, what happens? What is the Big Bang? What is the Big Bang? Explain now that you know in spiritual third. Means to discover. From nothingness. From nothingness, the five elements manifested. This is the Big Bang. Yes? Those five elements manifested out of nothing and then they came out in different permutations and combinations. Yeah? If you watch Cosmos further, you will understand this more and more in depth. Yeah? He says, finally the scientists have come to this conclusion that there is nothing like matter. Matter does not exist. Everything is a vibration. Yeah? It's not even a particle it is just a vibration yeah all these vibrations happening very close together form matter when they are very 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 far away spaced out that is what is air or atmosphere or space yeah everything is just a vibration even science has come to this conclusion and the same thing you are going to read in yoga vashishta now it's amazing that what science has discovered now in the past few years, spirituality has been saying this since the scriptures. And we don't know how many thousands of years old these scriptures are. Yeah? So this is clear. Yeah? And the theorem is clear. Can I go ahead? Now, can Harish read the last line, the last paragraph? Even as the essence exists in all things, as coil exists in sesame seeds, as aroma exists in flowers, the faculty of Objective perception exists in the perceiver. So even as the dream objects are experienced only by the dreamer, the objects of perception are experienced by the perceiver. So just as from a seed the sprout arises in due time, this, this potentiality becomes manifest as the notion of creation. Okay. Yeah. This is simple, no? Like when you are dreaming in night, in the night, yeah. Your object is what? Whatever rubbish you are dreaming. Yeah, with your shaking hands with Obama or you're dancing with Katrina Kaif or Angelina Jolie, whoever. Yeah. This dream object belongs to who? The dreamer, right? 
Got it? Like that only this perception of this creation belongs to the perceiver. Yeah? And just like oil exists in a sesame seed. Yeah, you, you all use sesame seeds at home. The oil is there in it but it is not manifest. Yeah? Just like in any seed, the tree or the, the plant is already there in that seed. Yeah? But it is not manifest. Like that only this creation exists as the dream object of the dreamer. Yeah, this will be clarified a little better on the next page. But understand that the potentiality is there in that seed form. Yeah? And that potentiality becomes as the notion of creation. It is only a thought. It is not real. Yeah? And how it is only a thought? We will go to that explanation on page 33 now. Okay? Okay. Who will read now? Manoj? They are describing the creator. Yeah. In creator, what is the description? There is no seer. Yeah. These are the qualities of the creator. Yeah. There is no seer. You understand seer, right? The one who sees is the seer. Yeah. In the creator, there is no seer. And no object of perception. In the last paragraph of the previous page, we were talking about the perceiver and the object of perception. Yeah, I am the perceiver and I perceive this laptop, this computer. Yeah. So, perceiver and object of perception. Dreamer and the dream object. Yes. Like that. We cannot say that the creator, in the creator there is some seer or there is an object that is seen. It's not like that. So you have to go beyond your understanding. Yeah? We have a very physical limitation because our, this is all we can see, hear, touch, taste and smell. Yeah? The creator is beyond that. So understand this. In the creator there is no seeing, no seer and no object of perception. And it, he is like a painting in an artist's mind. Yeah, how many of you have some hobby? You write poems or you, know, you write songs, compose songs. Yeah, many of us have such hobbies. Huh? We do painting or something. So when you are thinking... What should I paint? It's only in your head, right? Is it real? Yeah, it's only here. Yeah, that is exactly the description of a creator. He's just of the nature of thought. Yes, 
and we'll go ahead and see what else has he described the creator as. In the creator, there is no past memory. Past memory happens because of what? Previous karma leads to past memory, right? Do you understand how past memory comes? How is memory created? Memory is created because of an impression. Yeah? When we did the karma session, you remember? We had talked about impression of an action. Yes? In Patanjali, we called it Ashya. Yes? Yeah. So, this impression again and again on me leads to me remembering those things again and again. Yeah, there are many things that have happened in your past, but you don't remember them. Right? And there are many things that have happened in your past, but they have stuck onto you like glue. So, the ones that have stuck onto you, those are responsible for memory. Do you get it? Now in the creator there is no past memory because there is no previous karma. Yeah? And he does not have a physical body. He is made up of a spiritual substance. Here Vashishta is helping us go beyond our limited mind and our limited understanding. We are stuck so much to name and form, name and form. He is saying go beyond name and form. And understand that the creator is made up of a spiritual substance. Um, Mitesh asks, what does in the creator mean? Well, he is trying to just explain to you that in English, if you were to write, there is no seer in me, nor there is an object of perception in me. Yeah, it's just English. So that's the way they've put it. But don't literally take it in. As in, the creator is not the seer, nor is the creator an object of perception. The last line is very important. The creator has only the spiritual. Since the cause that gives rise to the physical does not exist in him. What is this cause? Thought or I. Yes, beautiful. The I. Yeah. And this I happened from what? Where the I led to duality, Manoj, but where did it begin? Impression. No, there's no impression only, na? Swabhava. <laughs> In the Maya. Understand this. There is maya that is inherent in the creator. Everywhere there is maya. Yes. This maya is the reason why this movement of thought happened of I. Once there was I, there is you. But what is inherent is maya. Yeah. And that maya is the magic of the creator. You can call it that. Yeah. It is the magic of this spiritual substance. Yeah? And because of that, this creator, he says what? Since the cause that gives rise to the physical does not exist in him. Yeah? Your physical body, how did it come into existence? He's going to tell you ahead, but... I want to see what you say. What do you think? 
karma but how did the first physical body come into existence the latter ones came into existence through karma manoj but the first one ha ah, beautiful the mind came first we will read ahead and understand this better now yes okay now who will read mitesh how did it come into being he is saying that it is only the nature of thought it is not real first of all he has already proved it to you in the theorem of creation that it is not real it does not exist anyways yeah, it is the nature of thought he has explained this to you yeah? the creator was also not created he yeah? is just the creator of all beings yeah? just like the bracelet is same like the gold yeah he, we are the same substance and creator's thought is the cause of this creation yes now understand that means we are all thoughts the moment we came out of the pool of consciousness what were we what did he call it बोलो बोलो थ्रॉबिंग या फर्स्ट ही कॉल्ड इट थ्रॉबिंग वॉट इज अ थ्रॉबिंग जस्ट अ वाइब्रेशन सो दिस इज ऑल वी वर्क ऑल वाइब्रेशन बिग वाइब्रेशन एंड स्मॉल वाइब्रेशन कैन यू सी दिस आर दे टू स्मॉल stop <laughs> yeah so throbbing arose yeah his thoughts spread out like this he says yeah this is the thought of the creator this throb brought into being subtle body these are subtle bodies yes you remember we had done we are we have so many layers of bodies we had done in pyr yeah physical body subtle body causal body you remember yeah, look at mitesh <laughs> yeah so the subtle body yeah which has your mind and your intelligence this came into being first then what happened they started thinking that they are real yeah and he explains it very beautifully yeah it was an appearance but they imagined it to be real and then it started producing realistic results just the imagination produced 
the realistic result like it happens when you are dreaming and you have some sexual enjoyment in the dream but it manifests physically yeah so that is the closest example that he could come to to explain this yeah and it's a very good example it really helps us understand oh yeah how my dream i really assume it to be real just like that these subtle bodies assumed everything to be real they imagined it to be real yeah that is why it started producing the realistic results so now let's go ahead and see what realistic results came out of this gazal is asking no who's asking jayshree is asking is throbbing same as many purushas out of brahman yes it is the same yeah throbbing he says because everybody is just a vibration and we are just the subtle body we are nothing but a vibration okay we go ahead who will read ahead now jayshree you've not read today he was not created but he is the creator of all beings surely the created like a bracelet is of the same substance as that of which it was created gold the creator's thought being the cause of this manifold creation and the creator himself having no physical body the creation too is truly of the nature of thought without materiality okay let me stop you here we have read this paragraph okay yeah we are on you read the next paragraph also the creator is of yeah you can mute yourself so what happened once these subtle bodies started thinking that they are real it started producing realistic results what is the realistic result here bolo bolo yes manoj thoughts but then what did they start thinking physical body perfect sakul they all thought that they have a physical body and it started manifesting this is where prakriti comes into the picture got it yeah every subtle body started having a physical body yes if you read that paragraph again physical how do they know what physical is it is not physical as in physical but like a dream yeah you are dreaming to have something solid probably yeah or to have an identity physical body is nothing but the most grossest level of i yeah the first i is just a separation it's just a thought yeah and then this i wants to say oh i like this i don't like this i want this i want to possess this i am this yeah when this i becomes deeper and deeper and grosser and grosser that's where the physical form starts arising 
Yes. Manoj, that is correct. To experience themselves, this eye started growing bigger and bigger. And the physical body is nothing but the grossest version of the eye. Yeah. I'll read out that paragraph again to you. That's the most important paragraph of this page. Though all these forms are of the nature of pure intelligence, these the, in the green were just the pure intelligence. Yeah? On account of self-forgetfulness of this, they forgot who they were. Yeah? They forgot that they were Purusha and they had come out from the Brahman. They had the thought of physical forms. Yeah? They started having this thought. Then what happened? They freeze into those physical forms. Yeah? Even as goblins means just like goblins, though formless, are seen to have forms on account of the perceiver's delusion. These are just stories you've heard about goblins, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you examples. Like suppose you're just sitting and you know, you remember when you came back from office, you kept your keys on the counter. But now that you have to go out to buy milk, you just can't find your keys. You're so sure you kept it on the counter. Yeah. And then you say, oh, some goblin came and just is playing the fool with me. Has picked up my keys and put them somewhere else. Yeah. This is a way of saying it, right? Yeah. So goblins, they become very real for somebody who is deluded. Right? For example, um, I know somebody very close who expired because he was an alcoholic and towards his last few days, he started imagining angels and, you know, people around him who were not really there. Yeah, he got into delusion. Yes? So, the delusion that can make you believe that this is real. Yeah, the same kind of delusion was experienced at the subtle body level where we took a physical body. Yes? Clear? Probably the first physical body is a microbe, a microorganism, a bacteria or a virus, something that little. But that's how it was formed. Is this clear? Rupa has a question. Is it something similar to intention we can consider? Yes, something like that. Yes, something like that. Like ice. Yeah? Ice is formed. But ice is finally formed from liquid, no? From water. Yeah? The, another form of that water is vapor. Yeah? The same thing has the form of water vapor, which is almost invisible, has the form of a liquid, which is water, and the same thing has the form of a solid, which is ice. Like that only I have a physical form also, and I have a spiritual form, which is nothingness. Which is Brahman. Understand it like that. Yeah. At some point of time I froze. Because of I. And when I froze. I took on a physical form. And when this. I. Starts melting away. Yeah. And I start boiling out of this physical form. I become wafer. Clear. That is enlightenment. Boiling point equals to enlightenment. <laughs> okay, Mitesh is asking a question. So the physical body came into being only because of the thought of having a physical body. That is correct. This is similar to the fact that the more we think about something, Raga and Dvesha will actually bring into existence. Absolutely. Guruji has said it so many times. Whatever you think, that will happen. Yeah? Even if you think 
I want this, I want this, that you might not get that now in this lifetime, you might get it in another lifetime, but it will come to you. If you think I don't want this, I don't want this, yeah, the don't want is not understood, remember that. You get glued to that don't want person, the person you dislike, yeah. So, the want or the don't want is not understood. What is understood? The person behind the raga or dvesha, you get glued to them. That is an impression which leads to your karma. Yeah? You are just adding to your sanchita bag. Same thing, very beautiful Mitesh. Rupa says, so don't think of monkey while meditating. <laughs> yeah. Clear? So far clear? Yeah. How we came into physical form? This understanding needs to be very very firm. So, I want you to go back and read these two pages again. Huh? Right now, you've been reading and you've been going through this, but go through it again. Because this firm understanding needs to get established in you. This creation is unreal. Everything. People you're attached to, people you hate, you're not attached to, people you want to be with, people you don't want to be with. Yeah. Things you like, things you dislike. Situations you crave for, situations you don't want in your life. Everything, all this big drama is unreal. Yeah. And this means Maya. Once you have understood this, you have understood Maya. Yeah. So, the last two paragraphs, Rupa, will you read? The Creator, however, is not subject to such disorders of a spiritual nature, nor materialistic. The Creator is and even so is creation too. Is in is in reality future in essence. This creation is causeless. Hence is essentially spiritual, even as the supreme Brahman is. The materiality of the creation is like the castle in the air, an initially project projection of one's own mind, imaginary. The creator is the mind. Mind or pure intelligence is his body. What is in, inherent in the mind? The object of perception is inherent in the person. Who has ever discovered a distinction between the two? Yes, there is a time lag. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so this delusion that exists in us, it does not exist in the creator because he is of a spiritual nature. And if the creator is spiritual, obviously, his thought is spiritual. Yeah, and creation is nothing but the thought of the creator. So, creation is also of a spiritual nature. Got it? It is causeless. When it is spiritual, it is obviously causeless. Yeah? There is no materiality in it. Yeah? It is like the castle in the air. You say, no, stop dreaming. It's like clouds. Yeah? You can you touch a cloud. Is it really there? No. Yeah? You can just imagine a big castle in the air yeah? and get deluded by it. But the creator, he is at such a, such a beautiful spiritual substance he is made of that there is nothing like delusion for him. Yeah? The last line is very beautiful. The creator is the mind. And mind or pure intelligence is his body. Thought is inherent in the mind. In your mind, there is always a thought. It is inherent to the mind. Yeah? The object of perception is inherent in the perceiver. 
we spoke about this yeah who has ever discovered a distinction between the two which two the creator and the creation yeah the creator is the perceiver and the creation is this object of perception right yeah if there is no difference between the perceiver and the object of perception there is no difference between the creator and his creation Here we end these two pages. I want you to read these two pages again. Yeah, I know they are a little complicated, and I want you to meditate. That is very important. Huh? Only in a state of no mind can you understand this. Can this get established in you? Yeah. So read page thirty-two and thirty-three again, and then go on to page thirty-four and. Thirty-five. That's all your homework is. Thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, and thirty-five. Yeah. I will begin with page thirty-six when we meet the next week. Okay. Any questions? Any questions on the moderator? Okay, no questions. I know it was kind of complicated today's session. That's why I want you to read it again. Yeah, and if you have questions, please email it to me. Your questions help others. Yeah, they might have the same question. Yeah, and then when we send out an email with question and answer, you help somebody else also understand better. ठीक है? So read these four pages, and I will see you. next wednesday okay happy purnima jai gurudev jai gurudev